now we're here and it's it's just it's parakeets it's birds it's sunshine it's flowers and the thunder and the, oh it was it was a romantic time mm -hmm. and this was our honeymoon because we'd yeah, only gotten yeah. married a week <laughs> or a week before a week later after like our rings were still shiny uh, and we were on the plane uh coming to el salvador uh, for the with, for the never-ending honeymoon yes much, precisely yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah with my family after that because we had already had told them that we're moving and then two weeks later we're we'll like oh yeah by the way we're getting married <laughs> and they're like oh my gosh just please no yeah. more surprises yeah stop We are live here once again from Bitcoin Beach. We have Ryan and Jessica from Two People in Paradise. Thank you, Mike. It's great to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Another family of Canadian refugees. Mm -hmm. uh, what 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 is going on here? Is there anybody left in Canada? I Whoa, mean, it's... you want to start there? Hey. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, I'm not sure if anyone's noticed what's been going on up in Canada lately, but um, a lot of Canadians are feeling motivated to peek over the fence, as you might say, and check if the grass is a little greener. And we can get into that if you want, but um, it's yeah, a, yeah. It's a I mean, might, tale. might as well dive into it at <laughs> yeah. least uh, a little bit. I mean, you more than peeked over the fence. I mean, peeking over the fence would be looking into the U.S. You looked, yeah. you looked way south. <laughs> I there. suppose that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, maybe do you want to find out what motivated us? We can yeah. Just say the story. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'm yeah. just curious because we've yeah. we've there's always been a lot of Canadians that have, have come to the Central America and El Zante, mm -hmm. but it was more just the people that would come for a few months to get to escape right. the cold. Yeah. And now we're seeing this whole movement of people that it's not mm -hmm. just for a few months, but they are actually selling everything, getting ready, yeah. rid of everything, and. Really, I, I say it a little bit in jest, but it's they really are coming as refugees. Like they don't feel welcome yeah. anymore in Canada. They're kind of feel not safe, yeah. not almost it's, like they're um, under an oppressive regime. And so would love to hear from you guys yeah. what's going on. Yeah, no, it's not hyperbole to describe it that way. Uh, the, and there is definitely an exodus underway. Uh, uh, it's kind of a silent exodus, I like to call it. Uh, and it's not just El Salvador, it's countries all throughout Latin America where are receiving Canadians now at a, a blistering pace. Uh, for us, um, so we got um, kind of um, punched in the face, I guess you could say, when we woke up the morning in February and discovered that we had no access to our bank accounts. And this was uh, during the trucker yes, thing? Yes, and yes, yeah. Uh, so essentially what happened was uh, the Prime Minister and the um, uh, Christia Freeland, I have other words for her, but I won't say them. Um, yeah, she um, announced, they announced on TV uh, one day that um, they would be invoking this never before used emergencies act to that was designed to address existential th threats to Canada uh, in order to put down a protest organized by the working class. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't donate to the protest. We were not in Ottawa. We had no involvement with it beyond moral support expressed online. And we didn't expect to wake up that morning into a different country uh, where you can find out that your only means of economic activity has been shut off arbitrarily by one man. Yeah. Right. And so for us, that was uh, shocking. To this day, we don't know why that happened. Uh, we called the bank. We got sent around in circles and no narrow. What no was answers. it like? You yeah. just couldn't log into your account, yeah. or it showed that you had no money in it, or what? Yeah. We, what did we, it look like? We couldn't use our cards. We couldn't access our online banking. It, it would just give like a decline uh, or cannot access service. So Everything. your ATM card yeah. also. Yeah. 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 Everything was offline. Yeah. And uh, we were puzzled because this was supposed to be only for people who were financially involved. Uh, but we weren't the only Canadians who were affected, who were not financially involved in any way. We're not sure if we were targeted. I mean, we're not high profile people in Canada. We don't see why that would be the case. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was a mistake. We don't know. But the, the you could have had the same names as yeah, somebody they were targeting. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It, it doesn't make a difference to us because we woke up that morning and we couldn't buy gas. We couldn't uh, get groceries, we couldn't pay our rent. Uh, and we had no idea if this was going to be for a day, a week, a month, a year how long it was going to go on. 
we woke up in a different country that day. Yeah. And uh, there was no going back from that. It was like, we, we can't ever feel comfortable here again. Because uh, either we, we will live in fear that this could happen again because we say the wrong thing at work or say the wrong thing on Twitter or, or whatever, and this all starts again. That's a constant fear that we have to carry around now. And we just couldn't tolerate that. So pretty quickly, we made the decision it's time to go. Yeah. Now, was that something that was even a thought in your mind before that? Or was it like you were already looking to leave Canada and you were already upset? Or was this like, oh, my gosh, this is we never expected this? Well, at that time, we were currently um, we were in the process of actually building a home on yeah. a piece of land we had just recently yeah. bought. And we were just. We saw what was happening in Ottawa, and we were like, "This, yeah, this, is this is this the place where we potentially would want to raise kids?" You know? Yeah, like like we were of the mentality that I think a lot of Canadians still are, where it's like things are really bad right now, but we'll just hang on a bit longer, and somehow, some way, they'll get better. Yeah, uh, maybe a certain politician will get elected next time, and and everything will just go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of in that that spell until that day when the bank accounts. Um, we had uh, a piece of land out in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia. It was about five acres. Uh, we had all the estimates done for the foundation, the septic system, everything else. Uh, we had been out there the previous summer with chainsaws, clearing the trees, getting everything ready to build our home. It was gonna be an A-frame cabin style home. We were so married to that spot. Yeah. And this was gonna be where we'd start our marriage, start our life together. Because uh, you guys were, were in the process of planning your wedding at that time. Yes. That's too. right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, leaving that all behind was was hard when when we sold the land and went to the lawyer to sign all the papers. Uh, a lot of tears. The, there was some tears there. Yeah. Uh, so really leaving Canada was it was like a breakup. Yeah. Uh, and, and it wasn't until we got here that we realized that it was a breakup and a getting out of like an abusive relationship. You know, we were stuck there. We were entrenched there. Oh, you know, he really loves me. And, <laughs> you know, like the country will come back and be yeah. nice again one day. Yeah. But we just kept getting abused and abused. And finally, in that February day, it was like, that's enough. We can't take it anymore. And we went through the heartbreak of letting all that go and letting all that unwind uh, to. And really, that process began emotionally before we decided to come to El Salvador yeah. and even to leave Canada. Yeah. What did your friends and family think about this? They think you guys were insane or did they understand where you guys were coming from or was it a mix? Um, I think your family was more understanding than mine. Yeah. Um, I come from a family where you, you brush everything under the rug. You just get along, you go along to get along. Mm -hmm. So, you just be a nice Canadian. Yeah, yeah yes, essentially yeah. like that. Uh, so when we told them, well, when we told my my family, their initial reaction was like, "What? Like, why? Like, you're you're crazy!" Like, and now that like we have chats with them every week over the internet and stuff, and now they're thinking like, "Well, how how much is a plane ticket?" Yeah. How, like. Is, is it warm there? Is it like, what's the weather like? Maybe we'll all come down for a visit sometime. So the, essentially they went from, you weren't saying to maybe we'll visit. Yeah. And my parents are actually here right now in the country. Yeah. Uh, they landed at last week and they're here for two months and it's an exploratory visit. Uh, maybe we'll retire here. Uh, but they initially thought, um, they weren't surprised that this was coming from me, you know, but uh, they, they were surprised that we picked El Salvador. And they, as well as many of our friends, thought that uh, they'd never see us again because we'd be dead in a few months, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, that's so when your parents showed up, yeah. were they like super freaked out? Or? No, they watched their channel. Okay. Right? So okay. <laughs> they know that the country is a very safe place now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because even some people that I tell that to when they come, they still. Remember my aunt and uncle came down. This was a long time ago, but they were like, every night I, I thought I was going to get woken up in the middle of the night and, you know, kidnapped. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, now that's how Canadians are starting to feel in their communities, that uh, they got to worry about crime now in Canada. Uh, it is absolutely skyrocketing. Uh, the street that we used to live on in Nova Scotia, there was a, a stabbing at the school there. Yeah, and, the uh, yeah, uh, just down the road. I and thought that was just a U.S. Uh, I know, right? Problem. Yeah. It's in Canada, also. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's a bit 
dark. I don't want to get too heavy into it, but there are, it's just story after story. We keep following Canadian news and the violence there is increasing. It's shocking, yeah. especially in places like Vancouver, where essentially there'll be a, a, like a murder that happens in Vancouver and people will just film it for the clicks yeah. and the views and they'll be taking selfies. And it's like, whoa, that's not the country I grew up in. No. Yeah. Crazy. So you guys knew you needed to get out. Yes. Why El Salvador? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Essentially, <laughs> like, well, like, yeah. Initially, we had our mindset on Mexico. Like, I guess many, we've talked to many expats and they've had the same experience. But um, I'd say it was a month before, while we were making all the arrangements to move south, um, we decided last minute, why not try El Salvador? We're yeah. already like very entrenched with Bitcoin and learning about it and yeah. wanting to know more. And, you know, what's what's the good of really having Bitcoin in a country where you can't use it when you can go to a country where you can, where you yeah. can. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. We we uh, it was very much a hard left turn. Uh, kind yeah. of last minute uh, changed the flight ticket to El Salvador kind of thing. Um, we are originally going to go to Mexico because so many Canadian expats are in Mexico. And we thought we'll just go join them, right? We had been into Bitcoin since 2021. Initially, we got into it as an inflation hedge. That's another story. Um, but we were kind of feeling like El Salvador has a lot of promise right now, but let's just wait and see a little while, see how this plays out, maybe give it a few years. Um, because, you know, we still thought it was a very dangerous place. And we thought, maybe let's just see, right? Let's watch it for a little while. But then we found, um, and you guys have had them on the show, Nikki and James. Yeah, we love found them. Their, yeah, we found mm -hmm. their YouTube channel, and they were showing what life is really like in El Salvador because you can't find that on Google Maps and you, you can't find that in English uh, anywhere else at that time. And um, we saw that they are like us, same age group, uh, similar sort of background, uh, like uh, in, the, in their home country. And uh, we thought, wow, okay, so they're making a good go of it and they seem to be having a great time. Let's try it. Uh, yeah. They really helped us find the courage. So did you yeah. reach out to them or interact yes. with them? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. No, we didn't just show up and knock on the door. <laughs> yeah. No, um, we reached out on by email uh -huh. uh, to, their, to their channel. We had a couple of uh, Google meets with them and uh, they just kind of gave us the lowdown, how the country works, what things cost, uh, what the safety situation's like, and uh, helped us sort of formulate it in our minds. And it was very last minute. We just changed our minds. Okay. Sorry, guys, Mexico. We had people expecting us in Mexico. Sorry, we're going to El Salvador. Hope to see you yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah. So you land at the airport. Mm -hmm. What are your first impressions? What what stuck out at you from? Well, considering the fact that we had just traveled about like what, how many hours? Yeah, we had a, a plane delay in D.C. and so we had been traveling for 48 yeah. hours. Yeah. So we yeah. we landed in flannel shirts. Yeah and jeans mm -hmm. so when we got out it was like a heat wave just hit us right in the face yeah it was like a blast furnace like yeah. it was shocking like like yeah. like the, the the amygdala in your brain is like squirting and going like turn around <laughs> if the, you're in danger uh it was like we don't know if we can handle this right and uh we got a ride over to airbnb down in altunco uh which we had booked for a week that was our only plan we had a one week booking at an Airbnb and we'd figure out the rest. Yeah. Uh, but we got down there, we just cranked the AC and we went to sleep for 16 hours. Yeah. And that was it. <clears throat> um, of course, all this happened after the obligatory selfie with Bukele at the airport. Um, but it wasn't until we awoke from that slumber in our Airbnb that it really hit us what we had just done and where we were. And it was a mixture of fear and excitement and i mean there's a lot of emotions mm -hmm. um, and it's it's it was such a special time and all the people that we meet through the youtube channel who are also coming here and moving here um they are going through that as well and we look look at that and we envy that we wish we could have that experience again you know <laughs> yeah are you you're interacting with a lot of people that are on the same journey as you guys that yes. are yeah and are they mostly from Canada also, or are you seeing it from all over the world, or what are you seeing? All over the world, but Canada is definitely the largest demographic there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we get people from every province in Canada. Uh, I'd say for every person who reaches out, um, every three people who reach out, two of them are Canadian. Okay. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think 
part of that might be a little skewed just because you guys are Canadian, sure. but yeah. but I think in general, like I meet more Canadians than I do people from the U.S. And mm -hmm. obviously, the U.S. is a much bigger country, so you would expect, sure, yeah. you know, proportionally there would be more people from the U.S. But it's just a ton of Canadians that are, that are pouring in here. Yeah. So definitely, the word is has gotten out. Yeah. That, that this is the place to be. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, only just getting out. Like it seems like. It was kind of a secret a year ago. Yeah. But now, especially right around this time, we're seeing so many people coming in. The the like the Bitcoin groups on Telegram, they're just blowing up with people. And every day it's questions. Where should I live? How do I open a bank account? Uh, how do I get a car, etc. cetera? It's, uh, the, it's, it's like a, it's got momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you seen any numbers anywhere? Because people are always asking me. I'm like, I don't have any numbers for you i can just tell you that it's like off the chart that there's people yeah. pouring into the country have you seen any statistics anywhere or any yeah no hard data no yeah. we haven't seen any data uh we do know that canada is trying to figure that out they're working on getting that data but uh, canada is yes yeah, yeah. they're they're afraid that all their their perhaps. cows are getting out. Yeah. Who are they going to milk? <laughs> yeah, perhaps that's the case. Yeah, uh, they're working on it. Okay, but none of that is public. So okay, we yeah. have no idea how many. We we just know from kind of talking to people in Mexico, people here, uh, people in Ecuador. Um, there's so many everywhere, and there's thousands and thousands of Canadians leaving right now. Thousands. So you guys had jobs in Canada, were those transferable to here or did you have to leave behind what you were doing or? Half of us did. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I quit my job when in my business kind of. What, yeah. what kind of business did you have? Uh, I was, um, I had a bakery. A while oh, really? Ago, yeah, in uh, Nova Scotia and the government. Yeah, the government you know? <laughs> like stepped on our necks yeah. with that a little bit. Uh, Regulations and unnecessary fees and all this other stuff yeah. that, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, stuff that you'd never run into here. Yeah, come tax yeah. time, let's just say it was like yeah. half the revenue in was taxes that. alone, which was insane. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a dark time. Yeah. It was probably formulated part of our motivation to leave because you worked your you worked so hard. I worked my butt to off. build that business. And then some regulator just steps in and says, actually, this is only for rich people, essentially, is what it boiled down to. Mm -hmm. is you don't have enough capital to get permission to run a business, essentially, yeah. is what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I, I have a food service business in the US, mm -hmm. and it's gotten to the point where it's hard for anybody to be a small business owner yeah. anymore with, with all the different regulations and all the different, I mean, from like, in my business, I had to deal with like the transportation department and the health department and That's the this right. and the that. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, you're like, I just don't think this is sustainable anymore. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's the same there. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly yeah. what, what's going on. Like, you know, certain places, you know, you, you could sell your products in certain vendors, but you couldn't because in other places because of their rules and regulations. It's mm. it was just a lot of. Yeah, it was, it was it, a very, very heartbreaking yeah. experience for us. And we were like, OK, well, what would you what do we do next? You know, and then. Yeah. So to answer your question, like like uh, just had the business and a brick and mortar job. I had an online job, fortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we came down here just on my income. OK. Yeah. And the plan was, you know, we'll get set up somewhere. Then Jess will find some online income uh, and uh, then we'll have two incomes. Mm -hmm. uh, and it worked out. So mm -hmm. it's worked out well. Uh, you're doing graphic design and stuff now, multimedia. Yeah. And uh, I'm a developer. Uh, so. You know, it's not like we're, we're not rolling it or anything like that. We're not super wealthy. We have to watch our money and we, we try to save aggressively. But um, our, I mean, a dollar goes so much further down here than it does in Canada. Yeah. And was your was your employer? Do they know? I'm assuming they know or they don't know. OK, no, they don't know. They're, they're well, not, that, not that they know now. Our new they might have seen the YouTube channel. Our, our, yeah. our clients know uh, now. Our cl yeah, our clients. So we've left okay. that job. OK, and we, yeah. we okay. had we had an employer that was more like traditional employer. And the rule there was you're not allowed to leave the province, let alone oh, wow. uh, leave yeah. the country. Yeah. And we just took off. OK. And, and we had VPNs and we were, you know, we had to use AI noise reduction on our microphones for the meetings so you wouldn't hear all the tropical birds yeah, in the yeah, background yeah. and stuff, right? <laughs> uh, always meant to be temporary. Um, one of the tasks we had when we got here was to find work where we don't have to hide. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, we were so happy when we found that. Um, we now work with a company that has worked with us as far as getting paid with Bitcoin. Uh, they understand nice. the Bitcoin ethos. Uh, their CEO and CFO were just here to visit the country. They're looking to expand to El Salvador. Uh, I understand. So both of you are working for the same company. Yes, now. that's okay. correct. Yeah. Contracting. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah we contract for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they they even just purchased um, like a, a node. I think we might have been Start Nine or one of those companies, and they're looking to set up a full node, a Lightning node. Like they're becoming Bitcoiners wow. now, Bitcoiners. and yeah. they're not. It's not a Bitcoin company. Oh no. Okay. No. no. Nice. It's, uh, it's. I think they came to El Salvador and they said we need to get on this because this is the future. Yeah. This is where things are going, mm -hmm. and so it's been wonderful. And yeah. They rely on us now for information about El Salvador, whereas before we had to hide. The fact yeah. that we were in El Salvador. So yeah. that was a nice change. Big load off our shoulders, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So you were saying you, you feel like your money goes further yeah. here yes. in El Salvador. What? Because this is the question people always ask. And obviously, it's always dependent on your lifestyle, where you choose to of live, course. all those caveats. But what would you say, just like a rough and dirty, like it's this much cheaper, or, or these things are cheaper, and these things are more expensive. Sure. People want to know those sorts of things because sure. that's the nuts and bolts of making a decision like this. Sure. Yeah. yeah. When a mango in Canada is twenty dollars, you know you've moved somewhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's that's a great way of saying it. Is mangoes can go for twenty dollars a piece in really? Canada. Really? Yeah. We, we've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not the normal price. Yeah. But like, if you go to a, like a, a nature store or one of those things, you can pay twenty bucks for one mango. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get several pounds of mangoes for 20 bucks. Yeah. Like yeah. Many pounds and more than you can carry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you need mangoes, come to my house. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> yeah. they're, we got way more than we'll ever be able to use. They're yeah. like falling off the trees. Yeah. Um, and in general, obviously mangoes are something that, you know, you would expect to be cheaper here being in the tropics. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in general, yeah. what have you found with rent and utilities and those yeah. sorts of things? I'd say our, our cost of living really is quite similar to what we were paying in Canada. The difference being in Canada with small, cramped, dangerous neighborhood, uh, always a struggle to decide, well, should we buy this or should we buy that? Can, how far can we make our paycheck go? Uh, whereas here, the same money that we're living on gets, you know, we have a house with a pool, we're a few steps from the Pacific Ocean, uh, the fridge is always full, we never have to worry about that. Uh, so really, like our way of our lifestyle, our way of living in terms of the economics hasn't changed. But as far as the, the abundance of that lifestyle has increased exponentially. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, anybody can find a way to spend more money yeah. if, yeah, if yeah. they want to. Right. You could you can come here and live very expensively and yeah. it'll be a lap of luxury or you can live extremely frugally. I'd, I'd say it's probably possible for a single person to live on under a thousand dollars a month and have a pretty decent life here. Yeah. Uh, decent standard of living. Um, but we're trying to find that happy medium because yeah. we want to stack them sats. So we're trying to find the, the right balance of nice ease, uh, certain luxuries, uh, but not so lavish that uh, we're burning all our money yeah. on, uh, on, you know, toys, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. And did you guys know that you wanted to live on on the beach when you came or did you just happen to that was the first place? So you wound up staying there or what? What would you tell people that are trying to decide where they would want to live? Sure. Yeah. For well, us. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah um, I would say that, well, like I said, like living in Canada where we would want to, we got a piece of land out in the country. So we were living in cities when we first met. So the city aspect of that, mm -hmm. we're, we're over it. We're, yeah. we're, we don't yeah, want we're kind any, of allergic to cities. Yeah. yeah. Like every time when we drive into San Salvador, it's, it's, it's like a heart attack waiting to happen yeah. <laughs> because it's, <laughs> It's so busy and everyone's everywhere and it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's overstimulated. Yeah. And right now at this point in our lives, we just want to relax yeah. a little. So yeah, we picked the beach because of the tranquility. Yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of community down here. A lot of Bitcoiners down mm -hmm. here, uh, a lot of like-minded people. So that was part of the decision. Uh, I'd say like if you're somebody who is accustomed to a hustle bustle urban environment. Yeah, San Salvador will probably be a nice fit for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lot cooler up there. It's yeah. not so hot. Uh, but if you're more like tranquil mountain person, uh, you don't mind about being kind of isolated, you might want to think about places like Tamanique or um, Chiltipan, I can't pronounce it. Yeah. Chiltipan. Uh, Chiltipan, Chiltipan, yeah. Yeah. Um, or if uh, you know, you're a surfer or you want, really want to be where all the Bitcoin action is, the beach is definitely where you want to go. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to have a tolerance for the heat. Yeah. Uh, and to some extent, you can acclimate to that. Uh, we, we landed here and like we said, we, we found it shocking. But within about two months, we we still sweat all the time. But it, it's not like a crisis time yeah. of feeling anymore. It's just like, oh, it's hot today. And you yeah. carry on with your life. Well, yeah. and it's, we're in the hottest uh, part of the year yeah. right now. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it certainly feels that. Yeah. Way. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Waiting for the cooling rains to come. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, what would you tell people to budget for housing? OK. Yeah. Do you wanna sure. Yeah. If you're if you're a family. Um, and you want to live on the beach, um, I'd say you're looking at 1,000 to five, or sorry, 1,000 to 1,500 mm -hmm. um, for a house with a pool, uh, you know, a few bedrooms, a couple bathrooms. Uh, so one to 15 for a family. If you're like maybe a couple like us and you don't need all of that, uh, you could probably do, if you're really good, you probably do 950 to 1,200. Um, and if you're a single person, you don't mind having an apartment and uh, maybe you like being in the city, you could easily get rent for 350 to 500 yeah. in a place like Planas de Renderos. Yeah. 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 I like Planas. It's 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 high and a little cooler. Yeah. Um, it's a little little remote still from if you want to be in the city, but, sure, but it's a yeah. pretty area. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, it's fun over there, too. There's lots of action. Lots going on in the streets. Yeah. Did. Uh, as, as far as finding a place where you want to live, do you feel like you have community now where you're at? Like it's, yeah. how did that compare to Canada? Do you feel more connected and integrated here or, or yeah. less? Well, that's or? one of the things is that we didn't expect to have such a circle here, such a community here. We, yeah. we weren't expecting to find that and so quickly. In Canada, uh, Toward the end there, before we left, it was very much that your relationships, your friendships, your professional relationships, it's all conditional. Yeah. Uh, it's conditional on having the right opinion. Yeah. And uh, if you say the wrong thing to the wrong person, uh, it's not long before some aspect of your life is destroyed. Uh, so we were very, So the very, cancel culture there is that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's we, I'd say it's like Soviet Union levels. Wow. Yeah, cancel yeah. culture up there. Like you yeah. almost have to give like talking to somebody you have to look for signals mm -hmm. and if you're like <laughs> code okay, words codes that, words yeah. and like kind of like that so it's like is it okay for me to say this right mm -hmm. now yeah. I'm, I'm not entirely sure maybe i should rethink but yes and so i mean that's that's a that's a tension that you carry in your mm -hmm. body right and it means that for us anyway being people who care about liberty and freedom and self-responsibility and whatnot that put us in a, a small fringe minority in canada uh, to use the words of our great leader. Um, and so we didn't feel like we all had a whole lot of community, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and those friends we did have, we weren't sure uh, how reliable those relationships were, right? Yeah. By coming here, and it's not just that everyone is like-minded because they're here. Uh, it's, there is this, it's in the culture in both the expat and the local communities that different opinions are okay. It's yeah. okay to disagree. And you can still, uh, like with Jeremy, for example, you've had Jeremy on the show, Escape to El Salvador. Uh, we spent some time with him up in his apartment, uh, having a few drinks and philosophizing and, and talking, right? And we, we butt heads. He thrives like, on it. On, on some <laughs> issues where we just totally disagreed. Yeah. And at the end of it, you know, you have a laugh, you have another drink and you go on with your life. And yeah. we it, having that experience with Jeremy at his apartment there, it was so refreshing. And we even commented then and there, we were like, we, we haven't had a, an ability to have like a conversation and disagree like this for years. And we didn't realize how much we missed it, yeah. you know? So that, that part of it has enabled us to find more friends here and make more friends, shake more hands. And uh, it's just such a load off the shoulders that just mm -hmm. that stress melts off. Uh, and that was one of the unexpected benefits of coming to El Salvador. Yeah. And how have you found your ability to, to interact with uh, the locals uh, either where you live or just in general? Have you felt like well, they're welcoming and accepting? Is there a language barrier? Yeah. What would you advise people? Lo siento, mi español es muy poco. <laughs> uh, learn that. It means, I'm sorry, my Spanish is very little. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the only that's thing. Go -to. It's my go-to, yeah. And <clears throat> we found that, that locals, they, when you try to speak Spanish 
and you you are miserable at it, but you're relaxed about it. They 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 think it's adorable, yeah. and they're willing to help you, and they're patient with you, and they're actually just amused, and they're kind of like, wow, this is really cute, you know. It's it's. I feel like they appreciate the effort. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah totally. for sure. Yeah, the the experience has been wonderful, and we, we have a uh, Roxana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend. A friend who we met when we were living in Saramar. Uh, we haven't been able to have a conversation with her, not really, because of the language barrier. We can say certain things like "How are you?" and "How was your weekend?" You know, we can say things like that. But we haven't been able to have like a back and forth, two-way conversation yet. She has become like a dear friend to us. Uh, we we even though we left Saramar, we invite her over to San Blas. And we try to speak as much as we can, but her daughter comes over, Carolina. We splash around the pool. We play games. Uh, it's and we can't speak to each other. Yeah, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they always make fun of me because yeah. I was like Jessica, <laughs> like you have to learn Spanish. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, are you guys taking any lessons or doing anything? Uh, yeah, or? we're on the Duolingo. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, try to practice when we go out to stores and stuff like it's tempting to just kind of say what you need to say to get to, to the transaction but I'll, I'll try to say things like um, uh, su camiseta es muy bonito uh, mm -hmm. your, your shirt is very pretty uh, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll try to like maybe ask a question uh, to just to you know practice yeah. the language a little bit yeah. and the, the idea is after a number of years of that I'm sure that we'll get to a level where we're conversational and and yeah. fluent. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, that they appreciate just when you make the effort totally. and, yeah. and, and totally. Yeah. yeah. The um, so is it primarily expats that are in your your friend group other than in, in general? And are, they, uh, yeah. are most of them Bitcoiners also? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Most are Bitcoiners and most are English speaking. Uh, the minority is, of course, where the language barrier is. Yeah. Uh, some have become Bitcoiners after the fact. Uh, some are more on the fence. Uh, it's it's kind of a rich tapestry, but there, there's no criteria uh, for people to be friends other than just be kind, be generous, be decent. That seems to be all that's required here in El Salvador. Yeah. Have you noticed that people in general just feel more excited or more... I don't know what the right word is, but just hopeful about the future here yeah, than, than in Canada. <laughs> than in Canada, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd say so compared to Canada, yeah. Uh, I think um, uh, Romania in the 80s was more optimistic than Canada right now. Um, but uh, there, there, is this, there is this electricity in the air here, uh, especially on Independence Day uh, mm -hmm. last time. Uh, we, we had the feeling on Independence Day we went to La Libertad and took in the celebration. We had the feeling like this was maybe the first time in a long time that people were out expressing real genuine pride in their country. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't just fireworks and, and beer. It was, let's wave the flag proudly. Yeah. Yeah. And that was an incredible experience to see that. Uh, we haven't seen that kind of national pride in Canada in as long as we can remember. Uh, people will put the maple leaves on their cheeks and they'll wave the flag, uh, but they're doing it for Instagram. And then they're going and they're getting blackout drunk and then they're getting a divorce. It's it's not the same kind of vibe as it is here. You know, there's real pride here. Yeah. Real like this is our country, it's our culture, we're sovereign, we're independent, and we love the direction we're headed. It's it's wonderful. And that that is definitely a newer thing, because I've been here for for twenty years and it's it didn't used to be like yeah. that. Yeah. Usually people were kind of almost embarrassed, like, yes, yeah, I'm from a place that's the murder capital of the world where yeah, sure. now there really is this just excitement and hopefulness about the future. For mm -hmm. sure. So. Yeah. And I think expats and foreigners, when they come in, they really feel that. And they yeah. a lot of times didn't even realize that was missing from their life. But all of a sudden they're like, Definitely. what's this hopefulness that yeah. everybody yes. has? So. Yeah. Yeah. There's many, many things we didn't realize were missing from our life until we got here many things community that sense of hope uh we're starting to feel our own sense of national pride uh, we're not citizens but we're starting to feel that a little bit we got flags hanging in our backyard uh it's um lots of things that we we didn't realize we were missing and those things have felt like they kind of just come on slowly the more time you spend here you're just like yeah like you're awakening from a, a bad dream yeah. and, and all these things are coming into clarity for you totally 
Yeah, yeah. We mentioned that 16 hour sleep that we had at the Airbnb after the 48 hour travel. Yeah. Uh, waking up from that sleep, it was it was like waking up from a nightmare because we were so far away suddenly from all of that, having gone from being totally immersed in it, like like being in a vat of acid, it's burning and eating away at you, and all of a sudden you're just out of it. And it felt like, wow, that was like a, a nightmare or a bad acid trip or something that we were living because now we're here and it's it's just it's parakeets, it's birds, it's sunshine, it's flowers and the thunder. And oh, it was it was a romantic time. Mm -hmm. And this was our honeymoon because we had yeah, only gotten yeah. married a week <laughs> or a week before. A week before. Yeah, because we were supposed to get married in uh, 2020 after getting engaged in 2019. Uh, but of course, you know, they had to lock down the world. They had to run that experiment, they right? Had, yeah. And so we had to postpone the wedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2021, there was the inflation. All of a sudden, we can't afford a wedding. And then uh, when we decided to leave Canada, it was like, we're either going to get married or not. So we have to do it now. Mm -hmm. And we kind of threw together a very affordable and expensive, but still sweet and quaint wedding uh, next to the beach in uh, Nova Scotia under some beautiful birch trees. Yeah. And uh, a week later, after like our rings were still shiny, uh, and we were on the plane uh, coming to El Salvador uh, for the with, for the never ending honeymoon. Yes, much, precisely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my family after that, because we had already had told them that we're moving, and then two weeks later, we're like, "Oh yeah, by the way, we're getting married," <laughs> and they're like, "Oh my gosh, just please, no yeah. more surprises. Yeah, stop. You need to stop oh. having so much surprises." <sighs> yeah, we kind of put put them through the gauntlet there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're happy for yeah. us so yeah. and they're very they were very supportive they were as much as they were like you're crazy but you know it's it's your life whatever makes you happy and you know that's, yeah. that was the most important thing to them yeah and you know what like we we talked to them fairly regularly and uh, jess already mentioned this but it it is true that they're starting to see um what we're living here and what we're experiencing here. And, and they're comparing that to the continued decline um, of their current environment, Canada. And suddenly it's it seems like people who maybe never would have ever thought of coming here, even for a vacation, are starting to ask some questions that signal a different pattern of thinking. So yeah. we're hopeful that that might maybe they'll be closer than we think, sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think you mentioned before we started that you had never left Canada before. That's right. I had uh, been in uh, Newfoundland, Canada, born and raised. And um, never even went to the other provinces? No, or... uh, the furthest I have been was back in 2020. 2020. Way back. Yeah, oh, yeah in 20, 2016 in Toronto. And that's the furthest I've been uh, in Canada. So. And now you're living in Central I know. America. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I told good. you you wouldn't be bored. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's always something. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure it's not all uh, rainbows and, and unicorns. What what things have you found challenging that you weren't really expecting? Sure. What yeah. we always like people to be like sure. realistic yeah. with their expectations yeah. when they come someplace. So it's, sure. it's always good to hear from people, yeah. you know, they're yeah. kind of freshly moved here and what they're experiencing or what the challenges are. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, it can be hard to get things. Uh, Amazon, like we just tried to order something from Amazon and uh, the product was $30 and shipping was $120. Uh, so we, we didn't get that, obviously. Um, you, if you want to get bring something in that you can't find in the country, you're looking to find someone who's coming here to bring it to yeah. you. Uh, mm -hmm. There is that. Um, this is true everywhere in the world. But in El Salvador, when there's any money on the line, you have to be really careful who you're dealing with. Uh, and um, so I don't want to get too into this, but we had an experience with our landlord recently where, um, suddenly our internet bill was not being paid. That was supposed to be included in the rent. It was not being paid. Uh, and on that same day when we were notified of that, uh, Del Sur, the power truck rolled up in front to cut off the power. So trust had been broken there. Right. And. As it turns out, it seems like the money we had been paying them for those bills was not being used to pay those bills. Uh, we had trusted that that money would go there because in Canada, if it didn't, you'd be sued. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was kind of a wake up call. We maybe should have been a bit more careful about that. We made, maybe should have assumed responsibility for those bills from the outset. 
um, in order to prevent this situation. Um, but um, I think, you know, this is true. This kind of thing is true everywhere in the world. Uh, but it seems like it, it applies here on smaller scales sometimes. Uh, we've heard some stories as well of people who have, are building homes here and uh, they're having some difficulties with contractors who aren't as upfront, as honest as maybe they should be. Other contractors have impeccable integrity, but you have to find those contractors because it can be hard, I think, for foreigners to uh, pursue recourse yeah. if they end up with somebody who isn't so reliable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, definitely, there's always people that are scammers. Another thing you run into here, Salvadorans are non-confrontational, so they'll yes. a lot of times tell you what you want to hear, even if it's sure. not <laughs> real. And yeah. so, yeah, so you always have to be like, hey, no, tell me for real. Like, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And of course, there is the heat. Uh, my, yeah. my parents are here now, as I mentioned, uh, they're finding the heat and it is the hottest month. Yeah. Uh, they're finding the heat to be a lot to take in. If, if you're not someone who uh, is from a hot country or just has a, a heat tolerance or just love the heat, uh, you might want to go up north a little bit into the mountains when you first land, uh, mm -hmm. ease into it because it can be ta taxing. Uh, I, I remember we were shopping in La Libertad in the first few weeks that we were here and uh, we were just getting some groceries and uh, I ended up getting dizzy. I had to sit down. I felt like I, I felt like I was in kind of a bit of a trouble, right? Uh, weren't prepared for that. We knew it was hot, but we weren't prepared for handling that heat. So that's also something that you want to think about. Have, always have lots of water and get your electrolytes. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you don't have a high t heat tolerance, start in San Salvador or yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah, San Salvador actually has very pleasant weather. Yes, it's, yeah. uh, it does, yeah. You know, and I don't know in Celsius, but in Fahrenheit, it's usually like 10 degrees cooler in yeah. San Salvador. Yeah. And then there's even some communities that are even higher elevation where it can be even get cold at night where you want to fire mm -hmm. in some of the mm -hmm. mountain areas. So there there is a variety. Mm -hmm. But on the beach, yeah, it's warm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a fan of the heat. Like, I, I, I like it, it's gone to the point now where I feel like we've adjusted so much that there's yeah. sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll forget to drink as much water as I should. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even notice. Okay. Like, you're such a fan of the heat. I love the heat. That you, you, you will sleep at 32 degrees <laughs> Celsius with a heating pad under you. <laughs> I tell you. And I got to share that bed. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a comfort that affects me <laughs> sure it does, sure it does. I, I didn't know we we're doing marital counseling here, yeah so <laughs> okay. we'll have to, to solve this issue um what would you tell the people is like the real story with with bitcoin usage in el sure. salvador yeah. uh, my experience is some people are disappointed they thought that there was going to be much more usage other people are it's much more than they thought. So mm. what items are you able to pay with Bitcoin easily? Mm -hmm. Do you have to search those things out? Uh, groceries. groceries. Groceries, easy. easy. Yeah. Um, and and you usually buy groceries at Super Selectos? It's a mix. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we go to vendors. There's there's a little store out in Playa Conchilo. Okay. Uh, and little, you can pay with Bitcoin yeah. there? Okay. Uh, they have a little sign out, pay with Bitcoin. Okay. And so zip, we were right there. And now we're regulars there. Yeah. You get eggs there, peanut butter, hot sauce, uh, vegetables, you know, vegetables uh, things of that nature. Uh, Super Selectos, uh, we, we get like yogurt, so uh -huh. things you can't get at those stores all the time. And what's been your experience um, paying at Super Selectos with Bitcoin? Hit and miss. Hit yeah, and miss. hit and miss. Yeah. Like there's some time, like in the beginning, I, I was actually afraid to ask because I didn't want to, because yeah. there would be a line behind yeah. me. I'm like, I don't yeah. want to take up too much time. Very, I guess, politely Canadian. And they would just be like, I'd be like, Pego con Bitcoin. Pego con Bitcoin. Pego yeah. con Bitcoin. Yeah. And she'd be like, no. And I'm like, okay. But now I'm like, yeah. it, the sign is right there. Yeah. We're doing this. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, like um, it depends who you get. Yeah. yeah. Like if you get someone who's trained on it and understands it and uh, can comfortably do it, then they'll just do it. Mm -hmm. But if you get a cashier who isn't trained on it and isn't comfortable with it, then suddenly Bitcoin becomes the ice cream cone machine at McDonald's. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's broken. <laughs> it's down. I, it doesn't work. But really, it's just they just don't know. Um, and you know what? Like, like we're in a country where 60 some odd percent are unbanked. They, they, they don't have a bank account. They've never used a debit card or, or a credit card. And the ask with legal tender is 
just skip all that and go straight to decentralized cryptographic currency. That's a big ask. And when you take that into consideration, adoption here is actually impressively far along. Uh, we're seeing a lot of businesses adopt Bitcoin and start receiving it, putting signs in the window, signs in the doors, they're asking for it. They want it because they can save it and grow it. Yeah. Uh, so there's a long road ahead there. Uh, there's no illusions about that. There's a long road ahead, a lot of people to reach, a lot of hearts and minds to win. Uh, but there is a forward momentum there. It, it might be small, maybe smaller than we want, but it exists and it is steady, it's constant. Whereas in much of the world, uh, at least in mainstream terms, there's no momentum there at all. There's lots of people adopting Bitcoin for themselves and they're hodling, they're putting it yeah. in their cold storage, but they're not trading and selling and buying and integrating it into their economic life yet. Uh, that momentum lives here and this region as well. It's also happening in some neighboring countries. So we're excited for that. Uh, you know, maybe we would like it if 100% of businesses took Bitcoin or if the government forced them to take Bitcoin or something like that. Uh, but the way it is right now is the way it needs to be right now mm -hmm. for this country at this time. Yeah. And what what percentage of your purchases do you think are done in Bitcoin? Wow, good question. Um, I want to say like 75%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And really that other 25%, we could eliminate that if we just made some decisions. Really, it's stuff like, it's like Papa John's. You know, we just want some pizza. Papa John's doesn't yeah. take uh, yeah. Bitcoin? Not yeah. yet. Okay. Not yet. Not at least not where we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, you know, we'll we'll have a long day working and maybe we just did 20 hours editing a video for the channel yeah. and we don't want to cook. So we'll go to Papa John's and okay, we'll, we'll use some of this fiat trash for some and you're get, so you're getting paid in in <laughs> yeah. bitcoin yeah yeah and then use the atms here to yeah. to get mm -hmm. cash and that's worked fairly well for you yeah. overall yeah. okay yeah. a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer as well like we'll, we'll we'll hit up somebody who has a chivo wallet and we'll buy some cash from them okay uh, but mainly the atms yeah yeah, yeah the chivo atms yeah. and has that worked fairly well getting paid in bitcoin and doing all that it makes life yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it, it works well um, as long as uh, the network fees are down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a little rough lately. Those yeah. dang ordinals. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I know, right? Maybe we should uh, start get into the JPEGs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No? Anyway, no. Um, once the, once the Bitcoin's in our wallet, though, uh, from our from our uh, once the Bitcoin's in our wallet, though, from our client. Um, it's a very simple matter to convert it into cash if you need to at the Chivo ATM. Mm -hmm. um, there are other ATMs here that work very well, but they don't give very good rates. Yeah. Uh, like Athena is one of them. Uh, the one in El Tunco is okay. I don't know who runs it, but it's okay. But you can do better by going to a Chivo. Yeah. Um, there was a while there where you had to wait for a confirmation on the network before you could get your cash out. That was frustrating. We were waiting sometimes half an hour. Has that been resolved? Out? I think so. Okay. Because yeah. last time, I, I hardly ever used the ATM, but I was going out of the country and and I like to just try it occasionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was in the airport actually. And, yeah. I, and then I, I couldn't get the money before I got back. And right. so it was a kind of a pain. I had to wait till I came back in the country. And Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah. But in the past when I'd used it, I just got the cash right away. So yeah, it's, the one uh, in Puerto is a little bit more difficult. I find you always have to wait okay. for the... That's the park in Libertad. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, it seems like there's two Chivo ATMs in Libertad, and one is in the park, and yeah, it needs a confirmation. Out. But the one at the fish market just needs it just has to hit the mempool, and you're okay. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, don't know why that would be. Yeah, but um, maybe that's not true anymore. It's been about a month since that happened. But in any case, um, it's quick and easy now. Mm -hmm. We wish it was on Lightning though. Uh, we'd, we'd rather just do it over Lightning. Yeah, we, we yeah. need to get that going. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. what? You, you, I think you'd said you're able to pay your rent with Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. Was that a hard sell for your landlord or? No, not at all. In, in fact, um, that was uh, one of the selling points that she offered us. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. 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 Uh, I was probably wearing the pin, the Bitcoin B <laughs> yeah, pin. I think you were. And she said, you could pay Bitcoin. Uh, and don't worry. Um, and uh, we were like, yeah. That, and that did help make the decision for yeah. us. Right. So, you know, if you're if you're a property owner in St. John's or St. John's, if you're a property owner in El Salvador um, and uh, you want to attract uh, tenants, uh, offer them Bitcoin uh, to pay. It's uh, it's an option. Well, it's so much easier rather yeah. than, oh, especially yeah. most 
most people coming in don't have bank accounts. Otherwise, you got to meet them every month and That's give right. them cash. This way, you just exactly. don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, your so, phone just lights up and your yeah. rent is paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? No, that's. And those are the type of things that I think orange pill people, when they just realize how much easier yeah. and then they start saving in it and they mm -hmm. go down the rabbit hole. And so mm -hmm. um, I think that is what's going to move the needle with adoption is kind of one, you know, family at a time that's living on Bitcoin and that pushes totally. other people yeah. to adopt it. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other pe thing people always ask about is transportation. Mm -hmm. What what have you guys decided for transportation? What would you recommend to other people? Uh, well, we landed on a scooter. We have it right now. We have a scooter. Um, in the future, I don't know how far, far or near in the future, we're hoping to get a motorcycle. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Cars in El Salvador are, uh, I don't know about you, but nice. I personally feel more safe driving a <laughs> motorcycle really or okay scooter, me not at all me not at all in El Salvador than yeah. a uh, a car because I, th I think the cars are just like it's too clunky and there's on narrow the streets it's narrow and it's, yeah. it's scary and yeah yeah uh, i don't know i i, I pref much prefer zipping around on okay. a, a yeah. Bike or a yeah. Scooter. Now, to be fair, we don't take the scooter to San Salvador. No. Yeah. So we might feel differently if we were up there. Maybe. But uh, I, I share the same feeling. Like uh, being on a motorcycle or a scooter, uh, you have got more visibility. You've got more maneuverability. It feels safer. Mm -hmm. Probably isn't safer. Probably. But it feels safer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we got the scooter because it has a trunk. Good for getting groceries. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it does well. It gets us uh, here to El Zante. It gets us to the grocery store, the vendors. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's really like before we had that, we were on the bus and, and we were um, uh, walking places and hiring drivers. Since mm -hmm. getting the scooter, our whole life has changed. It's yeah. uh, It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. And did you buy it new? It was it one yeah. of the Chinese ones yeah. you see everywhere? And they're, they're fairly the cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we bought it new. It was $1,000. Okay. Yeah. Um, fortunately, we couldn't pay Bitcoin for that at that store. Um, it was in the mall. We, we, yeah. We'd never wheeled a vehicle out of a mall before. That was a new experience. Um, but that was a thousand. Uh, so you did is, have to drive it from San Salvador. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. story. We didn't, but we didn't go. Yeah. We yeah. had uh, our friend Oscar to do that and in the pouring rain. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a nightmare. We felt terrible. We did. We yeah. got back and we had driven his, his, his car. car back. Uh, from the city and all the while like I said it was pouring rain and we had gone a little bit ahead I'd say we were waiting by the time we got back to our home we were waiting half hour for him you know and of course on a scooter or motorcycle you can't really answer your phone or yeah. do anything like yeah. that so especially if it's raining <laughs> yeah. yeah I was worried we were worried sick and yeah. when we saw him we were like oh my god are you okay like do you want a cup of tea do you want to like come in like, and the, the reason all this so, happened so. was because neither of us had ever ridden a two-wheel vehicle oh, really? motor in our lives before when we bought the scooter. Yeah. Uh, we were planning on like hitting the road at three o'clock and heading back home and maybe taking the back way and having lots of daylight. But you know how things go yeah. sometimes. Uh, it really got late. It took a while to get things arranged. And by the time we got out of the mall with the scooter, it was after dark and it was starting to rain. Uh, and it was just, this is the reality. We, we cannot drive this home. Yeah. We, we, not, no, not that's without, super unsafe yeah. if you've never yeah. ridden anything yeah. like yeah. that before. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and so Oscar graciously, kindly, um, with some persuasion, volunteered to uh, <laughs> ride it home for us. And uh, I mean, I mean, what a great guy. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, he, he was he became a friend of ours very quickly. Uh, he was a driver that we hired initially, and he became a friend very quickly. Um, we initially hired him to take us to La Libertad to get some groceries. It's our first time going grocery shopping in El Salvador. And uh, no, actually, that's wrong. Take us to Walmart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We so to get some. the first time we took, uh, we went with Oscar, it was to go to Walmart to get like some household essentials. And, you know, in Canada or in most places, when you get a taxi or a ride, they drop you off and then they drive away. Um, Oscar parked in the parkade and then got out of the car and started following us into Walmart. And we were like, what is going on here? What, Why is he who here? Who is this guy? What, are, are we in danger right now? Like, <laughs> we had no idea what was happening. But throughout the course of that trip, Oscar was taking us around Walmart, 
He was show, helping us speak the language. He was uh, telling us, you can get that cheaper at this other place. Why don't we get in the car and go over there? He took us over there. He started showing us around. He helped us understand the country, how it works, how to get things, how to accomplish things. And he became a friend because of that. So that was one of the, that was one of the fun experiences yeah. of first arriving here is not understanding what's happening to making a new friend yeah. all in the course of a day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the people here are genuinely just so helpful and nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's not an unusual story to have somebody do something like that. Yeah, yeah. like they're, they're so helpful and nice and generous that if you're coming from Canada, it, it makes you suspicious because you're not accustomed to that. Yeah. Coming from a, that kind of culture. Yeah. yeah. And that is something that we also had to adjust to, too. Like mm -hmm. we, we went through like this whole phase when we first got here of like, I guess, well, the country is like a little softer, the savior. So the demons that we had back <laughs> in Canada really got yeah. purged when we went in. It, it was a uh, it was a very yeah. therapeutic yeah. Uh, yeah, time like, in our lives where we had to just learn to let go a little bit of what yeah. we're, all the tension that we've had in Canada for such a long time. Without without getting too philosophical, <laughs> it, it, it's like we came to realize at some point, maybe four months in, that we had a lot of conditioning, social conditioning from Canada to have certain expectations out of other people, what their motivations are, what their intentions are toward you, uh, that were uh, quite cynical, quite pessimistic. And that mode of thought where we came from was kind of necessary just to survive, just yeah. to protect mm -hmm. yourself, right? Uh, if you didn't have that, you would be naive and you'd be rolled over. But we quickly discovered when we arrived here that that mentality, that way of thinking is uh, dysfunctional. It will limit you. It, it will uh, hurt your ability to form relationships and keep those relationships. And we had to drop that way of thinking. Uh, and we had to drop it like a, like a hot stone. And once we had achieved that, dropping that hot stone, it, it was a, a liberation. It was a sense of, of libertad, of, of being free of, of this, this demon that had been whispering into us, you know, don't trust those people, right? A necessary thing where we came from, but totally dysfunctional and maladapted here. So what a relief that was. Yeah. 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 No, it's... Uh it's it's really remarkable to see i mean obviously your guys story is unique in a lot of ways but is very familiar in a lot of ways to the people i talk to because they kind of go through these same things mm -hmm. um were you guys planning on being youtube stars when you <laughs> uh came to el salvador no. tell, tell us no. how the no. youtube channel got started i think andy has some uh some graphics from that um yeah, tell us how Yeah, so that happened. <laughs> it, it actually was born out of what we were just talking about there, about um, um, feeling this, this kind of internal shift, this emotional shift, spiritual shift happen inside um, as a result of going to a new environment. We felt like that is something that needs to be shared. Uh, th there is a, a magic here. Again, we don't want to have rose-colored rose -colored glasses on. There, there, you do have to be, you can't be naive. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not a perfect country. It's still a developing country. That's all true. Uh, but there is a certain magic here uh, that, that it needs to be told. It needs to be, people need to see this because this is incredible. Uh, and so, you know, seeing that uh, some of our friends, Nikki and James, uh, Francesco uh, from Money Delix, seeing them doing their channels and getting that word out, we thought, you know what, we can do that too. Uh, why don't we do that too? So we were inspired by them to start the channel and share our experience um, of this wonderful, incredible country. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, uh, it's taken off in like we never would have expected. Uh, I think because there's a hunger out there for, for hope, uh, for, for a sense of there's somewhere in the world where things are sane. And the, the YouTubers here are showing a place that's sane. And it's, it's not hard to, uh, to um, um, build a following when you're offering that message. Well, I noticed you guys have yeah. 
what six or seven thousand followers already yeah. i mean that or subscribers or whatever they're they're called i mean that's that's pretty substantial for something that's just started recently sure, um, yeah 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 and, we, and that just happened organically by you guys just telling yeah. the story and yeah. who yeah. who's watching your show who who is yeah. attracted to this who's i saw mm -hmm. i didn't go through them but i saw the one had like hundreds of comments in there so who sure who's your audience yeah, primarily it's primarily it's, it's, it's Salvadorans who live in the United States and Canadians who are just sick of what's yeah. going on in Canada and yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. It's probably sixty percent of the audience is Salvadorans living in California and New York. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those two cities in particular. Yeah. And they're and, looking at you guys and yeah. the ones that are living in their that's right. yeah. country that they felt like they had to flee from yeah. and now there's Canadians right. who are rushing in. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. a few of those have returned. Really? Uh, maybe because of the channel, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, but they've reached out to us and say, I'm home. I'd love to meet you. That kind of thing. We've mm -hmm. met a few. Uh, Regina being one. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and that's amazing. You know, um, and the rest of the audience is it is a lot of Canadians, although with Bill C-11, that, that might not be true anymore. Uh, with, with what? Bill C-11. Oh, Bill C-11 in Canada. What, what is uh, that? The, um, it's Canada's Internet censorship bill. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just got ran. It, yeah, you, you, heard, you didn't hear about no, this. No, I have not heard about this. Wow. So. Okay. Well, okay. So, Bill C 11 expands the CRTC's authority. The CRTC is the broadcast regulator in Canada. And previously, it regulated only broadcasters that had a broadcast license on cable and, and satellite TV and whatnot. Now it applies to anybody who, quote, from the, from the bill, who has a broadcast undertaking. Uh, so anybody at all who does anything. So uh, you guys would fall yes. under that. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. The the criteria wow. is so the criteria in the bill seems to be monetization. If if you have any monetization, now you're engaged in a broadcast undertaking and you can be regulated by the C CRTC. And theoretically, ostensibly, the purpose of the bill is to is to promote Canadian content, Canadian heritage, English and French language. Uh, in order to, I guess, because none of that can compete in a free market, maybe, I don't know. But um, that's the theoretical purpose of the bill. Uh, but essentially, who gets to decide what is Canadian content? What is Canadian heritage? The Prime Minister has said very publicly and proudly that Canada has no culture. It's a post-national state. The Minister of Canadian Heritage has towed that line. He's a Minister of Heritage, says there's no heritage. And these are the people essentially, in effect, who are in charge of deciding what content is Canadian and what is not Canadian. So that's rife for politicization. And every expectation from any Canadians who are, uh, I guess, alert, is that this will become a kind of Chinese style internet censorship uh, endeavor. Yeah. I, I met somebody, we, we attend a church in San Salvador, and this was, Probably last year I met a young Canadian guy and I, I didn't know how much to believe him, but he said that he had like a YouTube channel in Canada that blew up mm -hmm. and the police just showed up at his house one day oh, yeah. and said that they were going to arrest him for, I don't even know what it was, but some of the stuff that he had put on there that they said was illegal and mm -hmm. he had just like picked up and left Sure. Yeah, and it, it was it was ironic because he'd come and he brought a bunch of Canadian cash with him mm -hmm. and he was asking me, where can I exchange it? Because he couldn't find any place where he could exchange right. Canadian dollars mm -hmm. in the country. Sure. Yeah. But I was asking him, like, you know, what are you doing here? He's like, no, I just had to leave. Like, yeah. Yeah. the police showed up and said that I could go to jail for 10 years. I was like, what? Wow. Yeah, um, we've never heard a story like that. Um, there's similar stories. Um, not over content, but over saying the wrong thing in the wrong context in different different ways, but not over content. Uh, but we, we are aware of, of some Canadians, and we don't want to get too deep into that, but yeah. we're aware of some Canadians who have lost custody of their children and have been put in jail uh, and hit with tens of thousands of dollars in fines for disagreeing with certain ideological precepts that we should be careful about speaking about in this platform. Um, you can probably guess. Uh, it's happening in mm -hmm. Canada, that kind of thing. I can't speak to your uh, your contact there, your yeah. friend, but uh, 
If you were to produce evidence that that, that was a true story, I would say well, it's not surprising that, that that fits with what we're seeing in Canada right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can't remember how we got off on this uh, on this side note here, but uh, <laughs> yeah. back back to the more positive. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the YouTube channel and it's it's mm. neat to see that it's like connected you guys to all these Salvadorans that are you know st yeah. still in North America. Yeah. Um, and building these relationships and this kind of reverse. You're down here and, and they're up yeah, there. Totally. Um, what's what's kind of do you have any long term goals for the channel or is it just to kind of see this happen more and more? And what is the just so our own viewers that know what, what kind of content do you produce? What could they expect? What is sure. it storytelling? Do you go out and you're on location showing people different parts of El Salvador or yeah. people's stories or what yeah. is the yeah. sure it's it's uh, kind it's, of a mix yeah it's, uh, um, we are bitcoiners as you know um but we don't our channel is not solely around bitcoin like if anybody has any questions they can feel free to yeah. reach out to us about how to get started in bitcoin if you're interested but mostly it's like it's 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 almost like a I guess a tutorial on how to, like, you know, how to be free, how mm -hmm. to, like, you know, there are, we say it a lot on our channel, um, if we can do it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's... Yeah, yeah. Other YouTubers helped us find the courage yeah. to come here and make that leap. And we are trying to pay that forward. That's yeah. one of the mm -hmm. goals of the channel. Yeah. Uh, another goal of the channel is to tell the story of El Salvador, uh, both generally speaking, and individually speaking, um, this is a video uh, about Sandy Waves, a tour guide. Uh, is that her? That's her yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, her story is incredible. Uh, she's overcome a lot uh, of pain and uh, adversity to become a successful entrepreneur in El Salvador. Uh, this video, she mm -hmm. took us to Suchitoto. Uh, so we show, we show a bit of Suchitoto, the lake. Uh, I've learn. never been to Suchitoto. You've never been to Suchitoto. No. Suchitoto. Oh, it's beautiful there. I, I'm embarrassed to say that because yeah. I've been here for so long. But <laughs> the lake is fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's kind of warm there, right? Yeah, it's a bit warm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, when I when yeah. I get out of the beach, I want to go to like the higher elevations. Sure. So I yeah. think that. But yeah. I've heard it's beautiful. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. And uh, she took us out there and, and showed us around. She's a tour guide. That's that's her profession. Okay. And yeah. she also uh, helps businesses get started up on Bitcoin. She does that professionally as well. Uh, so. We're till we like in this video, we told that story uh, of, of coming from dodging gangs in San Salvador, trying to conduct her life to uh, no longer dodging gangs, uh, obtaining a degree of financial liberty through Bitcoin and starting this new business as a tour guide. We tell that story. Mm -hmm. uh, other stories we have told on the channel, um, we've got, should we talk about it now? So it's, it's kind of an announcement. Should we make an announcement right yeah. here? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So we're yeah. moving. We got to have a breaking announcement here. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So we're working on a uh, documentary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we we partnered up with uh, a professional uh, film producer from LA. Uh, his name is Scott Tipton. Uh, postcard from El Salvador. Mm -hmm. um, and we are in the editing process right now of um, a documentary about a charity that operates in the country called Shelter Canada. Uh, and they what's it called shelter, shelter? canada yeah uh, they're they're from canada uh -huh. they're, they're a charity based in alberta i believe uh and they come down here and so here's an example of the work they do uh do they live here in in el salvador or some of them do team? okay yeah. uh the the there's a coordinator here who lives here who, who um, who's the coordinator his name is Stuart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Stuart, oh, you know Stuart yeah. and Carrie. Yeah. They yeah, go yeah. to our church. So, oh, yeah, oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You yeah. know them quite well. Oh, great. Yeah. So you know who we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So an, an example, one of the stories in the film is a couple who uh, had a house collapse on their heads uh, after a bad storm. And uh, Shelter, the charity, uh, built them a new home. And these homes, they are, they are, I mean, they're not fancy, nice homes, yeah. but they are uh, certainly four walls stability their shelter and they enable people to to um lift out of impossible situations and launch pad their life and one of the great things that they do is they don't just build it for them they involve them in the building process so that there's a sense of pride there as well uh it's not that they're just getting a handout they're they're getting a hand up 
so to speak. So we, uh, we went out to a build site over in San Vicente. Um, El, um, I can't remember it now. El, anyway, the exact Hamlet doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. was in San Vicente. <laughs> and um, uh, we followed their crew around, uh, interviewing them, uh, showing the build process, telling the stories. And uh, we're very excited for what's coming. Uh, we, we expect it to be out by summer, okay, uh, nice. like maybe late summer. So July, August, maybe. Uh, translation is the, the time consuming, tedious part that we're working on right now. So yeah, that's been consuming a lot of our time lately. No, oh, that's exciting. Yeah. What's that? Lack, the lack of consistency within our videos within the yeah. past month has been. Yeah, we, we used to upload once a week and now it's once a month. Because you're working on this yeah. other, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it's, it's that and other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's exciting. I'm mm -hmm. glad we were able to break the announcement yeah. here. Stay tuned for the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and did you ever think that you would have a YouTube channel no. and be no. doing this? <laughs> no, no, yeah. honestly, not at all. Uh, it, but it has become kind of a, a passion project. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, I mean, it doesn't pay the bills or nothing like that, but it, it's a labor of love. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, we love doing it. yeah, no, I can tell I've, yeah. I've watched a few yeah. videos. Yeah. Uh, preparing for this and I was like you can tell you guys are enjoying yourself yeah, yeah. It. so yeah it's a lot of fun it doesn't look like yeah. Yeah. obviously it's work don't get me wrong but it, but it doesn't look like you're working it looks like you're enjoying the, sure. the process yeah. so yeah yeah the work comes with the preparation and the editing yeah. that's where all the work is you don't see that part on camera <laughs> but um it's it's a lot of fun and the connections that that come from that the people that you meet uh the the um messages you get from all over the world. Uh, some of them are, especially the ones from Salvadorans, are they really get you in the heart and they certainly put the wind in the sails and keep you going. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so what's one other thing that you would tell people that are thinking about moving to El Salvador or maybe you're already here and trying to decide if they're going to stay? Is there anything that else that has stuck out at you that we haven't kind of covered already? What do you think? I like to put it this way, like, uh, check your, check your motivation. Why, why, why are you thinking about moving to El Salvador? Uh, and then find out if that motivation is fulfilled here yeah. in El Salvador. So for a lot of people, especially that we talk to because of the channel is, is they're fleeing something They're They're afraid of where their country is going. Uh, so, if that's your motivation, um, come here, study the country, uh, study the culture, experience it, immerse in it for as long as you possibly can. And just keep that front of mind. Yeah. And if, if you can run that contemplation long enough in your mind, then the decision ultimately will be made for you inside. You, you won't have to agonize over it. You'll just get a sense that this is the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're coming here for uh i don't know to surf then yeah, yeah just just come here it doesn't I mean and surfing is awesome yeah right but um yeah other than that uh if you're in a bad spot and you have to move fast you'll find people here that can help you get set up yeah. uh, and you should just make the leap find the courage just do it if you're kind of on the fence and not really sure um if el salvador is the right place for you come visit first check it out and give it at least two months, at least, because mm -hmm. like a month, two weeks flies by like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of people come here, I think, running from something, but when they get here, they realize they're actually running towards something. Yeah. Exactly. Because it turns yeah. into a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. Did we put up yet? The, so the for, as far as people finding your channel, it's just two people in paradise. Yeah. yeah. And are you guys on Twitter, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah. under the same? Uh, two, two people, people in para. para. Two P people in para. para. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, where else can uh, people find on, you? Uh, we're on the... Noster. Okay. I, I can't recite all those characters. Yeah. Too now. Yeah. 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 Um, I still haven't gotten on there yet. I know <laughs> I need to. Yeah. I need to be on there because that's where all the Bitcoiners yeah. are at yet yeah. now. So yeah. we're uh, we're also on Odyssey and also on Rumble, Rumble as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rumble. We're trying to migrate over there right now. It's uh, not permanent. Not like it's an alternative. But yeah. We're trying to like mirror the channel over there. And uh, getting all the videos across has taken a while, but you can find most of the library on Rumble okay. as well. Yeah, yeah. We just started moving our videos to Rumble. Mm -hmm. Also, it's uh, I guess a, a little more. Uh, 
advantageous if you feel like you're going to be censored or you yeah, have some other exactly. issues. So, For sure, yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to, I saw recently the Tucker Carlson made an announcement that he was going to start just releasing stuff on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about exploring that also yeah. and seeing yeah. what about just posting straight to Twitter. So yeah, that's an uh, idea. It's yeah. uh, I think kind of like you guys, I never, I never wanted to do any type of video stuff or have a channel or anything. It just kind of all happened naturally and you right. feel like, right. okay, yeah. this is the place where I'm supposed to be and, mm -hmm. and yeah. can have an impact through this, you know, totally. this medium. So totally. it's, it's we're still trying to figure it out as we go along. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Well, thank like, you. Yeah, uh, we've been following it uh, since. Um, when was the first one we saw? Uh, Nikki and James. Nikki and James. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's great. I mean, the long form conversations. Mm -hmm. Of course, Max and Stacy. Yeah. Are always yeah. a joy to watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, love them. Jeremy's fantastic yeah. too. Jeremy's always fantastic. Yeah. He's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Well. I appreciate you guys spend the evening with us and we'll have to uh, cycle back in a few months totally. and, and get some yeah. updates from you guys, especially as the um, the documentary gets ready to be released. Yeah. We'll definitely, totally. I don't know if we can do a showing you now somewhere locally here yeah, or something. That would be, be great. Yeah. We'd awesome. love to do that. hundred percent. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you guys. All right. On. <laughs>